I am 18 years old. I finished my matric last year. I am from a province called Northwest. Okay, my father died in 1998, so I do not know my father. My mother died when I was 10 years old. I'm 17 years old. I've been with the rest of the children for four years. I lost my parent when I was in, uh, in 2010. And I was really grateful for the opportunity because I've been praying for it for a long time and I was glad that God answered my prayer. My parents passed away when I was six months. I'm from Northwest. Raise the Children International is a nonprofit organization um, that identifies highly motivated orphans from the rural, remote Northwest province. Um, and provides them with better educational and um, we take them to private schools um, here in Pretoria as well as the Northwest. We have partnered with Raise the Children for approximately 10 years and so we were delighted when Raise the Children were able to find AIDS orphans and join in partnership with us so that we could also care for them. About six years ago, uh, we began partnering with um, Raise the Children. We were one of their first partner schools, uh, the Teacher Fellow Program, because it provides us with, a, with an educator for the school that the children are attending. It allows, it helps the Raise the Children uh, scholars, but it also helps our other scholars. It's also a, a, an added blessing. A lot of the children that come from vulnerable backgrounds, either orphaned or um, in foster care or something like that, a lot of them in, in poorer areas have difficulties with school. I decided that I wanted to spend a year volunteering in South Africa with Raise the Children. What I like about this program is that it's small and it's very personal. It's nice to know that I'm not part of a big organiza organization that's impersonal. I know the founders, they know me by name, they know all of the Raise the Children Scholars by name, um, and it really feels like more of a family. For me, it was important to join an organization that makes tangible impact. So while Raise the Children is small in scale, it's sustainable, and it has an impact that you can feel. You're investing in promising orphans, kids who really care, and kids that I work with every day. South Africa is an interesting place. Maybe intimidating for a lot of people, but I really do feel very safe at the school. You know, there's a community here which I like. This isn't exactly a tourist destination, which I think makes the experience all the more special. I worked at a Christian primary school in Hamanskra, which is a not quite urban or not quite rural community. I'm about 45 minutes away from Pretoria. I taught um, English, social sciences, and art to grades four through seven. Um, that was quite a challenge for me. The added challenges um, were language barrier, um, cultural differences, um, but it also made it such a rewarding experience. In the beginning, I think one of the biggest challenges that I had, and, so, and a lot of Race of Children teacher fellows have, um, is learning how to discipline. A lot of teachers in this situation not only become teachers, but mentors, um, mothers and fathers um, to the children. I like someone who is more caring, someone who is a good listener. Why? Right? Because as students as we are, sometimes we just need an ear that will listen to us or a shoulder to cry on. We also need the teachers who can um, help us in our academic life, like maths. Even though it was hard emotionally, mentally adjusting, we had um, fellow mentors from Joyce Children. They helped us a lot. They helped us with adjusting to the teaching methods because we had after school um, classes, extra classes in maths, like everything, our subjects, they were, they were helping us with our homework, helping us with reading, helping us with, inter with interpreting the questions, like in a way that you can understand. And it also benefited us because we were forced to talk English with them <laughs> every single day, every two weeks or twice a month we had one-on-one -on -one session. That's when we started gaining confidence. That's when we started seeing ourselves also as part of the, the, ch the children there because we also lacked confidence. I taught there and I spent a lot of extra time with these scholars um, and they're very special and I was able to mentor them 
um, to tutor them. It was just very rewarding and, and personal to build these relationships, relationships that I still have today. South Africa has a unique culture. There are 11 national languages and many different ethnic groups. I'm still learning after a year of being here. I know that there's a, a new push um, to get people who are involved in education studies um, to, to become teacher fellows. And I can definitely see the advantage of that. The two teacher fellows that we've had um, have, been, have been English majors, which is great. Um, and they've done a really good job of teaching English. But uh, as the principal, I've seen areas where they, 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 they would have been much more comfortable in the classroom had they had a background in education. What's most important for that the fellow teacher needs to bring. They need to, to be able to just be patient. We were very, very negative. We like, sometimes we felt like killing ourselves, but the fellow teachers were patient enough to just every single day try and just, just pull us to the positive side, pull us to the light. Once we were emotionally stable and positive, school for us was not that much of a problem. So I think they need to be patient. They need to be loving. They need to love us when, no matter what, even though we don't, we don't really see ourselves as worth it. They need to be, yes, full sympathy for us, but not pity us, because that, that breaks us also. So they need to show us that we're strong, even though we don't see it. Just treat us normal, like we normal people. Do not always label us as orphans. And then they also just need to be able to, to give time, just quality time, because just to make friendship with us, friendship with the learners, have like bonds with the learners, because that helps. If you can go, if you have someone to talk to as a learner, you, you're able to grow because you can cry to them, you can just tell them about your doubts, your insecurities, in that way they can just, from their elderly wisdom, they can guide you that you, okay, you can go this way, you cannot go this way. So love, patience, uh, quality time, and do not pity us. To be a teacher fellow, I think you just need to be somebody who is outgoing, caring, and not afraid to get out of your comfort zone. It's important that you are interested in education, but I think that being able to work with the kids one-on-one, -on -one, regardless of your method or approach, is important. You become like a family with the kids once you're here. I work with the four RTC scholars, Richard, Lesajo, Tabiso, and Jose, three days a week, but then I see them almost every day. So I think it's just really important that you care about people and that you want to work one-on-one -on -one with these kids. So I would, I, would, I would urge anyone who's thinking of it to get involved in the program and, and just help to make uh, opportunities available for, for some of these fantastic young people for whom life has been pretty tough up to this stage. I really encourage you all to not fit the mold and go find that white collar job where you'll be bored at a desk for the next however many decades and come live life.